Kilda. I call the Honourable Dr. Peter Sharples. Tenakwe, Mr. Tenakwe, Speaker. Ano tenaku tau ko tai neki te ne hui o tatau me te kau papa e takotone i mui a tatau itara ne i tenaku tau fakapiri mai. Speaker, I stand to talk about the second reading of the Ngati Hawa Claim Settlement Bill, and to note that the clear and pragmatic approach that Ngati Hawa has brought to the settlement of their claims is a triumph and the product of their absolute belief and commitment. And I endorse what. Um, Nanaia has said about, about them and their commitment to their affairs. <coughs> I quote Ngāti Hawa co-leader negotiator Lance Rapana, who said, and I quote, the key to arriving at this sort of outcome is the ability of your iwi to pull together, 100% together, and move as one. So tēnā koe, Lance. It's a result of hard work, unity, and the pursuit of justice by generations of Ngāti Hawa that has allowed us to reach this point today. Although the recent treaty settlement uh, negotiations that culminated in the bill before us, and perhaps one of the fastest on record for Ngāti Hawa, this path was instigated many years ago by the Rangatira Wirimu Tamihana. Wirimu Tamihana, Smith Speaker, Wirimu Tamihana anointed the first Māori king, giving rise to the position of Tumwaki, a role of local and national political and spiritual significance that endures to this present day. The family are always involved in the appointment of king, the king, queen, Māori. I would like to acknowledge the role of the Tumwaki whose leadership has contributed to the timely success of the settlement. In the settlement, the Crown apologises for breaches of treaty rights from the 1860s onwards and in doing so has acknowledged the means employed by the Crown to strip Ngāti Hawa of their fertile lands, their rivers and their maunga. Mr. Speaker, thriving communities with a strong economic base were totally destroyed during the invasion of Waikato in 1863, 1864. Many Ngāti Hawa were killed or wounded. In 1865, the Crown confiscated a large area of Waikato land, the Raupatu caused destitution within the Ngāti Hawa Rohe and left them virtually landless. Until his death in 1866, Wirimu Tamihana sought the return of Ngāti Hawa lands, a cause subsequently pursued by his son, Tupu Taingākawa. Wirimu Tamihana submitted petitions to the Crown and his pursuit of justice and peace became a model for many generations of Ngāti Hawa who continued to be confronted by prejudiced Crown systems. By 1880s, private parties had acquired, acquired a large quantity of Ngāti Hawa land. The alienation was excavated through public works for roading, railway schools and hydroelectric purposes. This included a Ngāti Hawa long-standing grievance relating to the Crown's public works taking of land at Waharoa. In World War II, the land was taken for an aerodrome after which there was a complete failure to return that land. Slowly, surely, and comprehensively, the landscapes and waterways within Ngāti Hawa, Hawa Rohe, were forcibly taken out of their hands. The loss of land undermined their social and traditional structures, removing their ability to exercise customary rights and responsibilities. Mr. Speaker, despite the long history of seeking a meaningful relationship with the Crown, and despite Ngāti Hauā's insistence for peace and justice, Ngāti Hauā has endured great prejudice at the hands of the Crown. So this settlement acknowledges the wrongdoings of the Crown in this regard, in doing so, the settlement heralds a new chapter in the relationship between Ngāti Hawa and the Crown, based on respect for the mana and rangatiratanga of Ngāti Hawa and its leaders, tēnā kūtau. Ngāti Hawa is already well regarded within its community and around the mutu, and this bill will legislate in law the importance of their relationship uh, to their whenua. The settlement includes eight sites to be vested in Ngāti Hauā, totaling 
706 hectares. This includes Maunga Kawa, vested in Ngāti Haua as a scenic reserve with public access maintained. Ngāti Haua will also be involved in the co-management arrangements for the Waikato River, as has been mentioned, within their area of interest through Waikato Tainui. And if the Waharoa Aerodrome land is no longer required for aerodrome and ancillary aviation purposes and reverts to the Crown, then it too can be vested in Ngāti Haua. So, Mr Speaker, this and other redress, including the settlement package, it actually in no way compensates for the huge loss of land experienced by Ngāti Haua at the hands of the Crown. However, I'm really encouraged the humility of Ngāti Haua, their graciousness and their hard work, their unity and their pursuit of peace and justice, Koto, uh, as an iwi. Uh, it's inspiring, not just uh, to iwi in Waikato or around the country, but to all New Zealanders. So, Mr Speaker, joy, tears and applause greeted the settlement when it was signed in July last year. Today I stand in support of the second reading of this bill with the same acclamation and commendation. Marira tēnā kūtukatoa, tēnā tātou. Mr Speaker.